Good morning, Floss Tube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross stitch. Every once in a while, I have something else crafty, but today it is all cross stitch. If you are new to my channel, I want to say welcome and thank you so much for pressing play. I really appreciate you giving my channel a try. I hope you like what you see, and you'll hit like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And feel free to leave comments, questions, or just straight old comments. I do answer everything. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back each week and hanging out with me um, on whatever day you hang out with me, even though I tape on Fridays. I appreciate it so much and I appreciate you and your interactions and it means so much to me. It is, the lighting's a little bit, I had to do the other overhead lighting today because it is a dreary, dreary morning. Um, we have rain coming our way, especially tomorrow. It's supposed to be quite a washout. I think up north they're getting snow, but I think we're getting rain. So I'm in my cozy sweater and we have the lighting a little bit, uh, a little bit more than I would if I had a little bit of sunshine coming in. So we'll deal, we'll deal. Um, let's, let's start with the stitching. All right, I have one finish, then I have a few whips, and I have a new start. This week you're gonna see not as much stitching. It's funny because last year I started my floss tube channel, I have to check the date exactly, but it was sometime, I wanna say probably the second week of February. And that makes a lot of sense because I, and I didn't connect what January would look like with me and my stitching. Of all the year, of all the months out of the year, January is my busiest on my Etsy shop. For those of you who don't know, I have a paper crafting Etsy shop because I sell Valentine's cards. Most specifically where I get most of the business is children's Valentine's cards. So starting, well, for the people who are really on the ball, the week after Christmas, the, the Valentine's will start. Right about now, mid-January, is where the bulk of my Valentine's orders will come in. And then come the beginning of February, you get the panicked will it come in time emails <laughs> for orders. Normally, I give it through the first week of February. This week, this year, because of the post office, February 1st, there's no guarantees anymore. But I, was, I wasn't sure what January would look like this year. I didn't know how many schools are in session, how many schools might be having Valentine's parties or card exchanges. So right now I'm in the studio quite a bit stamping up right now. It's dogs and unicorns are the um, choice of the year. It's so funny. Usually there's some thing that is the popular one for the year. Right now the unicorns have been a hit. But um, so long story not made short. Uh, the stamping I only have five projects to show you this week. Normally a lot of times I try to hit a different one each day, but because I didn't get a lot of stitching time in some days, I just carried over projects just to get a little bit more, but that's okay. But yeah, you will see probably maybe smaller projects or maybe not quite as many while January is happening just because I am, I am stamping a little bit more. I did have, luckily it's gone now, I did have blue, actually I still do, the ink, no matter how many times you wash your hands, will stick on your hands for a long time. And I had a really blue finger here because I had stuck it in the ink accidentally. So if stuff is showing, um, I apologize, but I can only, I can only, basically it wears off after a while. It, I can only get so much of it off from washing my hands, but that's all right. All right, let's get going. Four minutes in, you wanna see some stitching. So I do have a finish. This one was close. I don't think you're gonna be surprised. Lizzie Kate, Snow Friends. It is part of a set. I have, I have the one of him sledding, it'll be Snow Fun, and I have this one. They're cute. I'll probably end up picking up some more at some point, because I do enjoy stitching snowmen. This is done, um, this is a restart, because I originally started it on a neutral color, but I wasn't digging it, so I changed it up this year, and I changed it to Ice Blue 18 Count from To Die For Fabrics. So here we are up close, and this is what it looks like. Love it, I love it on this color. I love this blue for snow, uh, for winter, because the snow really shows up nicely, and that's always the, the challenge uh, is getting the snow to show up. 
This um, did have a couple of French knots, which I just fudged. I, I mean, and you probably won't even notice either way uh, on him unless you were looking close up at him on the owl, but he's fine that way. The other thing, so in the pattern, I can't show you the button because it's attached. Um, oh, I can show you on the piece. There's a little button there for his little tail. I did not use it. I actually, ironically enough, I have, and I have to check the size, I think it's a mini brad for paper crafting, for those of you who are paper crafters, and all those are, the ones I have would be acid free, so that wouldn't be an issue. And I kind of have one that reminds me of this button that has all the little prongs. It's supposed to be more flowery than anything. That might work for his little tail. I'm not sure. So I left it plain at the moment, so he has no tail. but. I'm calling it a finish because I know kind of what I want to do, but um, if if I don't like that and I don't want to do the button, I'll just do a few stitches or something. I think I've seen others just do some stitches for the tail. But that's it. Super cute. Love my snowman. So that's the first, that's the finish. Okay, now, works in progress, whips. The first one, and two of them are digital, so I'm just gonna show you the black and white picture. It's called Let It Snow from Primrose Cottage Stitches. She's an Etsy shop. If you're a quilter, she has a lot of quilting stuff too. Um, quite a bit actually. And ah, this is where it is. I, If I had more time to stitch this week, this probably would have been a finish, but it just wasn't happening. This is done on 18 count Winter's Night from To Die For Fabrics. She's currently, um, on a break catching up on orders, but uh, I know she'll be back soon for those of you who might wanna give her fabric a try. I link it in my fabric people section. Really, really like it. It's a new fabric dyer that I found that I adore her fabrics. So this has mistakes all over it. Somehow or other, I made a mistake in counting the L for let. I, I can't figure out how I did it or why I did it, but it affects everything else down here. And then, I think I have another mistake somewhere around. Oh, you know where it is? It's in the border. I wasn't paying attention and and it's a repeating border. It's not exactly that hard, <laughs> but um, there's a mistake. So one side has one less and one side has one too many, but honestly, from a distance, is anybody gonna notice? No, so there was no way I was taking all of that out just to fix it. Especially because I could see this being a little ornament. So who's going to see it really up close and start counting? So I'm okay with the mistakes. I'm running with it. So hopefully this week, this guy will be done. Um, as long as I have stitching time. I try to, even on my busiest days, I try to at least do a little bit at night. Because it feels like the day is not complete if I don't get a little bit of stitching in. So after dinner, it's kind of set in between time. Um, when, you know, what am I going to do? So I do a little bit of stitching. So that's that. My husband and I have been watching, um, I know we're behind, we're behind the game on all these things. We've been watching Mandalorian and we've been usually watching an episode or two at night. So that's when I've been doing some of my stitching. Yes, I am behind. I love Baby Yoda. He is the cutest. I know he's not called that, but he's just the best. He's my favorite part of that show. So, next, next. Everybody seemed to like this one. It's a lot of fun. Mary Poppins, and it's Little, the Little Stitcher. Because you have Little Stitch Girl, totally different. This is the Little Stitcher. She's on Etsy. And I don't think anything is physical. She might be all digital patterns. I'm pretty sure I linked it in the description box. I put all the information. If I didn't, I will put her in there if you'd like to check out. She has some great patterns. All right, I might as well just fold this a little bit because you don't need to see the big piece. So here we are. This is done on Winter Blues from Bestitch Me Fabric. This was, I believe, the most recent fabric of the month for standard. That would be December. And yes, it doesn't look like much difference. I worked on this. This umbrella is 
huge, has way more stitches than I realized. So I don't remember, I don't know if it was Saturday night, might have been Saturday night, I settled in and I, we, we have Disney um, Plus and in looking at Mandalorian, you know, other stuff comes up, you know, when you're looking and Saving Mr. Banks came up as an example and I had not watched it because I don't, I'm, I'm way late to the game when it comes to movies. So I said to, I said to Mo, my husband, I said, let's, I want to stitch Mary Poppins. Let's watch Saving Mr. Banks. If you haven't heard of it, it's basically Tom Hanks plays Walt Disney and is it Emma Thompson plays the author of Mary Poppins and Walt Disney has tried for years and years and years to make a movie for Mary Poppins and she has resisted and it now follows the story of her coming to Hollywood and the potential of the movie being made. You kind of know whether or not the movie was made just because well, you know, <laughs> but it's, it has so many faces that I recognized and I really enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. Um, and it was perfect to stitch this while watching that. And I think it's a true story. So I learned quite a bit as well about the backstory of the author. I think if it's a true story, I'm almost sure it is because at the very end, they kind of showed pictures of the people that um, the actors played. But either way, it's a good movie. It's a, it's, it, fantastic acting in it and I enjoyed stitching it. I thought I'd get more than the umbrella done, but isn't that the way with cross stitch? You say, I'm gonna get this, 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 and this, and then two hours later, you've got this much done. So, <laughs> but anyway, I think once now that that umbrella is done, it will, it will pick up <laughs> and get a little bit easier. Hopefully. Um, this will take a while though, because there's a multiple pieces of uh, there's multiple colors in that. Oh, and I did forget to say with this, it is charted for 310 DMC. I am using Anchor Black. I prefer the Anchor Black uh, for my black stitching. So that's the only change I made. Otherwise, everything will be the same as what she calls for. And my last work in progress, I felt like pulling out Bells of Ireland from Nora Corbett. Just felt like stitching it. And... And this is where I got. I'm really enjoying this. So my, my goal was to try to get the wing and there's a lot of color changes and a lot of counting. And I got quite, quite a bit done and I was kind of like, forget it, I want something else. So I started in on her dress. The darker of the two colors of blue is actually a mix of blues. So it's really pretty in person and then this is a solid. But then obviously you even work your way out for darker and you know, a little bit more. So um, I am enjoying stitching this quite a bit and having a lot of fun. We'll see how I feel about it when I have to learn how to do beading. But <laughs> for the moment, I really like it. I like it a lot. And if anybody ha doesn't know, Bells of Ireland were featured in my wedding bouquet. So that's one of the reasons why I really enjoy this pattern a lot. And I started it right around my anniversary in September because of that reason. All right, those are the works in progress. I have one new start. And if you've been following me, you know I've been doing this series. So it's not a surprise that at some point in January, I have to start the February one. The February Cottage from Country Cottage Needleworks. And as with all of them in, oh, did I mention the fabric? I didn't think so. Bells of Ireland is done on beach glass from My Vintage Needle Arts. It's a very, very pale greenish 18 count. All of them are 18 count. All right, back to this one. So this is done as they all are. I kept the set exactly the same. I don't, there are other yearly ones I want to do, which may not be the case, but I was stitching these, I'm stitching these for my mom, didn't know how I wanted to finish them, so they all are the same. This is actually vintage country mocha, but the backside. So it's more um, beigey than the regular side. And that's all I got. I was hoping to get more, but yesterday was, I did not get a lot of stitching in at all. This was 
This is actually two days worth of stitching. But like I said, when you only have a little bit of chunk of time, not much happens. So I think this one's cute. I can't wait to do the little heart. These are little heart trees over here. And the roof is a fun design with two different colors. Um, it is. This is all, as with all of them, they're all being done with just the straight DMCs. So if you want to see how they're done with the DMC. So that's it. That's all the stitching I did this week. I think coming up, we'll see. We'll see. I um, I did scale down on what I was offering in my shop. So my orders are less than they would normally be this time of year. Obviously still keeping me busy. Uh, once I have, I think I have four outstanding orders at the moment. And then we'll see what happens. The week of Martin Luther King is one of the busiest just because people realize, oh, I need to get Valentine's. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, I am enjoying the stitching and hopefully I will get lots, lots and more done, at least a little bit each day because I've got to keep my stitching sanity. All right, that's it. All right, let's move on to some other fun stuff. I myself want to give away, super excited about that fact. I was watching Kim J Inspired, and if you watch her once a month, she gives away a project bag. And I loved the fabric, and you know I am slowly dipping my toe. So far I've been gifted two gorgeous uh, project bags, um, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna enter. <laughs> and like many of you when, you, when you respond to me, you're like, I never win anything, I'm so excited. I never win anything. Ever. So I was super excited when Kim called my name. I got this great card from her, which is such a neat idea. It's actually a place in Georgia where she's from. And I love that idea. I wonder, could, like if I took a picture I liked, I wonder if in the photo you can make almost like a line drawing of it. Wouldn't that be neat? And then print that off and you could use it as cards that way. I have to think about that. But I really liked that. And here's the project bag I won. So Kim gives away project bags from Joyful Stitching. Deborah is her name and she is on Etsy. I will link her down below. She has beautiful, beautiful choices. So look at this cute little snowman and the Christmas design. I love it. And this is what we had. So not only did it come with a project bag, which she sent floss in there so now I'm now I've got some extra floss which is always welcome and inside nice and pretty uh, quilt but also this little bag as well so you can put all your other extras in there as well super cute same fabric so I want to say thank you so much to Kim for your giveaway and to Deborah for making fantastic project bags. Super, super excited. Now I have to have a Christmas pattern going all year long. I think I'm going to, uh, now that I've shown it, I can stick one of my Christmas designs right in here. So I will have it in a new fancy bag. So thank you very much for the giveaway win. Super excited. It was fun to be on the other side of it. <laughs> But I do enjoy giving away to all of you as well. So that is, that's fun. I do, I do like that. Um, shopping wise, not a ton, not too much to see here, just a few things. So because I am doing the cottages, I went through and I realized that after February, I was gonna be in trouble <laughs> if I didn't pick up the last ones that I need. So I picked up, I needed March, so I picked that up. I think some of these were out of stock at one, two, three, April, when I was looking for them last year, probably, May. And June. So I really, I couldn't have finished the year if I didn't pick these ones up. So now I have all of them. In fact, once I stitch February, I only have these four left to do out of the year. And then hopefully I can get to the store, get some backing fabrics, and just, I think I'm just gonna do a simple, a simple finish for them. 
And then the other pattern, which I've had my mind, my eye on for ages, I've seen both Janet from Janet Jabber and Breeze, Bree from Breeze Stitching Stuff. They both stitched it and I loved it. So I picked it up. Yonder from Hello from Liz Matthews. Super, super cute. I have no idea the background fabric I'm going to use for it yet. I do like what it's showing on. So we'll have to see. I have to grab the flosses and see what happens with that. But that's the, that's the other pattern I picked up. And then I did get my December, right? This is December, yep, color and cotton, fabric of the month. So if you have not gotten it, I am in the anything, as opposed to there's a straight neutrals and then there's a, you're gonna get sent to anything. Um, and I think I'm in that one. I'm not in the neutrals. Um, so if you are in the anything and you haven't received your December fabric of the month yet, look away for a minute. Otherwise, here we go. It's called King's Blue. So that, there was definitely a trend with fabric, the color, fabrics of the month this season for December, but I love it. You know me and how I feel. It's a little bit darker in person. It's showing a little lighter on the screen, but I love it. Love, love, love it can't wait to find something to stitch on it and again winter would look fabulous on this okay you can look again if you wanted to be surprised and hadn't gotten that yet that's it for shopping I don't even know I might I I always have at least a few couple fabrics on order somewhere just because it takes forever so at some point I'll be surprised with those but I don't think I have anything else coming I have my eye on some digital patterns. There's some digital stuff that's come out, plus just things that I've been looking at that I think I want to I want to grab. So we might see some digital patterns in the future, but otherwise, I'm not really sure. I don't think there's much coming. Who knows? Maybe it'll be a surprise. I don't think there's a lot back ordered though. Um, but that's it for shopping. Giveaways. Uh, this one was this one was popular this this week. Hello Winter from Stitching with the Housewives is the one I'm choosing this week. And we have we had a mixture of yes to winter and no to winter. I loved it. I loved it. And for me, winter, if it could snow, and I had mentioned this to some people, if it could snow, because it's always beautiful if it snows overnight and the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning, the sun is shining, if the sun's shining, and everything just sparkles and it's beautiful. But then see if the temperature would come up to like 45, even 50, then I'd be a happy camper because you get the pretty snow, but then you get the, the regular temperatures and life would be so, so much warmer. It's the cold and the wind and it just goes right through you and bites through your bones and everything. That's what's not so much of a fan for me. All right, I had a lot, so I'm trying to mix them completely up. We had a lot of people looking for this one and separate them here. The winner is Sharon Peterson. So Sharon, if you could please either send me your address through my Gmail, which is down below, or feel free to DM me your address through Instagram, which is also down below. So Sharon, congratulations. And when you get back to me, I will send that out to you. All right, this week, I do have one this week. Uh, we're moving for briefly. I, I might still do some winter stuff, but with February approaching in mm, half a month, a couple weeks, I thought, okay, I'd do a couple kind of February things as well. So this one is a design from Needle Bling Designs, and I'm going to turn it this way to show you. It's a little welcome with the heart. They have a whole series of these welcomes. I think I have the summer one. It's got little flip-flops. I haven't done it yet though. Uh, I th I'm not sure if I've decided on background fabric or fabric itself, but they, for a bunch of the different um, times of the year, they have these and I thought this was cute. And you could do a lot with the fabric you do it on and you could even change up the colors if you wanted the heart to be different color. Um, this is more of a pink tone. You could obviously make it more red tone if you want. So that's what I'm gonna give away this week or for next week's giveaway. So question. Now this, remember, question is for everybody. And then if you want to enter, I'll give you a word. 
The question for everybody, but if you are entering, you also have to answer it, is if you could own a shop, now it cannot be cross-stitch, because I know we all love cross-stitch, we would all have a cross-stitch shop. If you could own a shop of any type, whether it's you know regular retail or cafe or something that you just adore, you know, maybe you would love to own a yoga studio, I don't know. But if you could own some sort of shop, what would it be? And it cannot be cross-stitch. For me, it would be a bookstore. I would love, love, love to own a bookstore. Nice, cozy bookstore uh, would be just an ultimate dream of mine. Um, but what for you? What would be for you? What would be if it, nothing was an object, somebody said, I am going to bankroll all this and you can have any type of shop you would like, what would it be? So that's the question for everybody. But if you wanna enter for this, pattern, not only answer the question, but say the word welcome, since this is a welcome pattern. All right, so question, word welcome. Otherwise question, I really would love to know, because I love to, that, that, that tells me more about you, like what do you like, what is something that is uh, you're passionate about that would just be amazing to be able to have that be something that you could share with others. So that's my question. All right, that's the stitching stuff. It was, it, January's will probably be shorter just because I am busy stamping and getting inky. So um, if you don't want to hear life stuff, then I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you next time. If you want to hang up, bye-bye. That didn't make a lot of sense. If you want to just hang out with me for a little bit more. Yesterday, yesterday was my adventure. So most of my week, has been stamping. I have definitely spent more time stamping. <laughs> Shamrock likes to follow me around. It's a little unnerving though, because in the studio when I'm stamping, I have my I have a table that I stand at because I, I lifted it up so I can stand. It's a little bit better, you know, on my back and my neck. And so right to the side of me there, he sits and he just stares at me. So I could be there for a few hours and he's just staring. <laughs> A little unnerving after a while. I'm like, go oh, lay down, don't worry about it. Sometimes I shoo him out of the room and close the door just because <laughs> I'm like, I can't have you staring at me anymore. So that's a big portion of my week. Um, but then yesterday, so yesterday I was, I was gonna run a couple errands. We put on the dishwasher and I was into the kitchen and walking by and I'm like, something smells funny. It smells like burning rubber almost. And I, the only thing on was the dishwasher. So I go by it and I kind of sniff at it. I'm like, mm, it smells a little weird, but maybe that's the way I don't normally sniff my dishwasher. So I, um, Mo was up in a, he was in, <laughs> he was in a big call actually for work. And I, I wrote a little note basically just saying, you know, as soon as you're off, I have to run some errands. Dishwasher kind of smells a little funny. Can you come down afterwards for that? So I dropped the note off sneak in and put it in while he's in the middle of his call. I come downstairs, I'm like, okay, you know, I'll sit down and write in my little stitching journal about what I'm stitching. Yes, I was, had to do the day before and then yesterday, so I'll do that. So I literally just sit down and all of a sudden I hear clunk, 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 all these weird noises. I come running out to the kitchen as I was right in the other, in the dining room area. I come to the kitchen area and I'm looking at the dishwasher and there were sparks shattered. So you've got the panel and right from underneath the panel, there are these huge sparks of fire basically coming out. I of course start yelling. <laughs> I run over to it. I'm like, what do I do? So I ended up just turning, you know, shutting it off basically. So it would stop running. Hopefully I, afterwards I was thinking, I don't know if that, I had to do something, but I was like, I hope I wouldn't electrocute myself. But no, I just stopped it from running. Spark stopped, but they're huge. The kitchen stunk of burning. Mo comes running down. Connor comes running down. Luckily, he was out of classes at that point. And our kitchen's a disaster for the smell. All the windows are going open. The dishwasher was mid-cycle, so he runs downstairs. Mo does to shut off the, the power to the dishwasher, just in case, because we don't know what's going on. We had to take all the dishes that were in there out and hand wash them. And then there was a huge basin of 
water that hadn't been drained because it was mid-cycle, so all that had to be drained. So now my microwave sparked and completely died. Now my dishwasher sparked and completely died. I'm hoping that's it because we had an issue with the washing machine down in Delaware. So that's three. Those are those are the things coming in three for appliances. So no more appliance problems. So needless to say, this dishwasher is, this was here when we bought this house and we've been here probably nine years, nine, maybe 10 years. This I don't remember exactly. Connor was third grade. Now he's a senior. So it'd make nine years. So it, it was here before we were, we were here. We had redone the kitchen, but we didn't change the dishwasher. So I don't know how old it is. I, I'm not playing around with it. I don't think it, we don't think it's worth it to even try to pay somebody to come out to tell us if it's worth the fix. So now we have to go shopping for a dishwasher. So I think that is <clears throat> my plan tomorrow morning. There's a place that Mo wants to, to check out for the dishwashers. So we are going to go there and try to find a dishwasher. Nothing fancy, just something. I'm only gonna be here for another couple years, so I don't need bells and whistles. Something simple, something that will work, and uh, that's it. So <laughs> that was my adventure. Thank goodness, I have to say, usually, I don't leave the house when like the washing machine's going or the dishwasher because I'm always afraid it, it, it's gonna flood. I never think sparking, but I'm always afraid there's gonna be some sort of disaster and there's gonna be a flood. Of course, I go in other parts of the house, so if it flooded, I wouldn't even know. I'm so thankful at that point that I was going, planning on going to the post office to ship stuff rather than being up in my studio, which is up on the second floor, because I never would have heard it. And, thinking about the fact that if it had continued running and sparking, if it would have caught fire, is a little nerve wracking. So needless to say, that was my appliance adventure um, and hopefully my only appliance adventure for a long, long time because I've had enough of sparking appliances at this point. <laughs> um, so yeah, so running to look for a new dishwasher is on the plans. Stitching is in my plans. Megan asked for Christmas if we could paint her room. She just wants plain old white. Most of the walls in our house have some sort of color. So that is Mo's weekend. He is uh, going to paint her room. So that will be an adventure in and of itself here this weekend. And that's about it. Um, I hope you are all well. I hope you're taking care of yourself. I'm thinking about all of you. For those of you who said you're in California, I'm really, really thinking about you. It's 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 scary in parts of that state right now. It's scary everywhere. But um, I'm keeping all of you in my thoughts and wishing you health and just safety and all of that good stuff. So please, this week, take care of yourselves, everybody. And until next time, happy stitching. <laughs>